And okay, now let's bring you that story about the former president, Jacob Gezeshegisa Zuma's private prosecution case against the incumbent, President Matamela Suramaposa. It was postponed in court today to the 26th of May. Now, Zuma is accusing Ramaphosa of being an accessory after the fact for failing to act against state prosecutor Billy Downer and journalist Karen Mohn. Zuma accusing the pair of leaking and publishing his private medical records that were the basis for granting him parole in 2021. At that time, Zuma had served just two months of his 15-month sentence for contempt of court. Muloko Muloto, a reporter, he was tracking that story for us. He was in court earlier. He's back now in our studios. Good afternoon, Muloko. This appearance, what was it really about? Well, good afternoon, Braden Moyani. The court appearance today really was for the former president, Jacob Zuma, to show face as the private prosecutor in this matter where we know he is trying to prosecute the incumbent and his successor, President Cyril Ramaphosa. Now, according to Mr. or Advocate Dalim Bofu, um, when he was addressing the court, it was important for Mr. Zuma to be there in person because a failure to do so was going to lead to a situation where this case falls off. But we must emphasize, Braden, that the fact that Mr. Zuma was in court today to keep this case alive, it is just a matter of procedure. The high court order that was issued on Monday essentially interdicting Mr. Zuma from prosecuting President Cyril Ramaphosa until uh, the finalization of Part B of the president's application wherein he is contesting the validity and legality of the two non-prosecution certificates and the two summonses. That order stands. In other words, whatever Mr. Zuma is doing, whether he is um, complying with legislation or the law to make sure that this case that he has opened against the president doesn't fall off. On the one hand, we know that the president is not going to be prosecuted by Mr. Zuma, at least until that particular Part B uh, review has been decided upon. But let's listen to Advocate Dalim Bofu, as he was explaining before court today, the reasons why they were there with uh, Mr. Zuma in person. So, my lord, in terms of Section 11 of the CPA, mm. um, and I, I, I know your lordship doesn't have time, but just for the sake of perspective, I'll just uh, read it out quickly. <clears throat> Eleven one says, my lord, if the private prosecutor does not appear on the day set down for the appearance of the accused, uh, it says in the magistrate court, but the, the, that's been interpreted to mean in any court, or for the trial of the accused, the charge against the accused shall be dismissed unless the court has reason to believe that the private prosecutor was prevented from being present by circumstances beyond his control, in which event the court may adjourn the case to a later date. So it's that last part that really brings us before your lordship for the court to adjourn or postpone the, the case to a later date. For the sake of completion, I'd read sub, subsection two, my lord. It says, where the charge is so dismissed, the accused shall forthwith be discharged from custody and may not in respect of that charge be prosecuted privately again. But the attorney general, and that means the NPA, or a public prosecutor with the consent of the attorney general may at the instance of the state prosecute the accused in respect of that charge. In a nutshell, uh, without this uh, sitting, the charge would be dismissed. And that situation is more serious, my lord, as you know, than what would happen in the civil courts where the matter may be struck off the roll, then you can re-enroll re it. Here the wording is very clear, it will be dismissed and you can't bring it back unless if the NPA chose to, to prosecute. So we, we, the, 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 this appearance is important for that reason. <clears throat> uh, so Muloko, what's next now in this matter? Well, what is now going to happen, Braden, is that uh, Part B of the President's review application, wherein he is poking holes on the legality of the two summonses and the two non-prosecution certificate which the former president relied on to charge him criminally. That matter is going to be heard 
in the South Gauteng High Court on the 17th and the 18th of May. Now, the court has given timelines there as to uh, who must then uh, sub, uh, submit the affidavits, founding affidavits, uh, responding affidavits, and all that. But also, uh, ultimately, of course, after submissions of all those documents, those two days have been set aside for the hearing of that Part B. But it is the judgment of Part B that will ultimately determine as to whether Mr. Zuma is indeed eligible to privately prosecute President Cyril Ramaphosa. That, of course, if the court says those two are unlawful, he won't have to, he cannot be able to continue. But in court today, it emerged uh, through Dalimbov that Mr. Zuma intends to appeal the interim court order, Braden, that interim interdict that stops him from proceeding. Now, there are lawyers that we spoke to who are saying it's really not possible to uh, appeal the interim order, but Mbofu seemed confident to say that, look, addressing the judge, that, uh, look, you know the law, you know what the issues are, how to go about such issues. However, he is saying at this point in time, they haven't decided as to whether they will approach uh, the, 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 the Supreme Court of Appeal or they will go directly to the Constitutional Court. But what matters is that indeed they will appeal. And that was also confirmed by Mzwane Lemani, who is the spokesperson for the JG Foundation, JG Zuma Foundation. Let's listen to him. His Excellency President Zuma will indeed be uh, appealing the judgment of the full bench uh, in terms of this interdict and all of that. Uh, but what has not been finalized yet is uh, which court is going to appeal it at, whether it's directly at the Constitutional Court or at the Supreme Court of Appeal. Uh, that matter will still be cleaned out by the uh, legal team. The, the, the purpose of that appeal would be to set aside the interdict. Once you set aside the interdict, then it means all the arguments that uh, President Ramaphosa wants to have, he can have them in the uh, criminal court. Right now we've got an unnecessary situation where we've got two courts dealing with the same matter. And yet if you appeal and it's struck off or whatever, then it doesn't mean he cannot continue with his argument in the criminal court. He can still do that, which is what we're advising from day one, that uh, these arguments can be made in a criminal court. There's no point in uh, doing this uh, kind of a confused process. That's uh, Jimmy Manye, um, Le Manye, rather, of the JG Zuma Foundation, ending that update by senior reporter Muluko Muloto.